Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Kim Barrett Show. I am your host Kim Barrett and on today's episode we've got Mr. Mike, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name joining us. No, I'm kidding. Mike S, I'm going to call him because I don't want to butcher his last name. Uh, but Mike is an absolute gun when it comes to sales and sales psychology. Right? How do you understand how to improve your sales processes? How do you make tweaks in the languages that you use and the language that you use to be able to improve your sales performance? So as I said, he is an absolute gun. So if you're someone who's wanted to improve your sales, you're gonna to wanna to talk to Mike. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to listen to Mike and take note of all the things that he shares with you today. So make sure you grab a pen and paper and get ready for this one. And of course, if we can help you get more leads so you can get more sales, head over to marketingmogul.com.au or we have got your back, a few resources there to help you grow your business. But until then, let's jump into the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Yeah, Kim, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Absolute pleasure. Now, I always like to start the podcast off with the same question every time, which is if you and I met, we're out at a party and I said to you, Mike, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to answer? Uh, I mean, if we really boil it down, I help sales pros make more money, right? And obviously there's so much beneath that elevator pitch, but that's like the crux if we're talking about, I mean, the company's the results engine, right? So we're all about results. Like those are the results we're helping our clients achieve. Hmm, I love that. And then I'm just probably they're going to go, cool. Like what sort of, when you say that, because obviously there's so many different types of salespeople as well. You've got inbound, outbound, you've got door to door guys. Is it everyone? Is there a specific type of salesperson that you guys help the best? Yeah. So we've worked with pretty much everyone across the gamut, but we primarily work really well with commission sales pros, specifically either door to door. Most, I would say 90% of our clients are door to door right now, but anyone in an outbound commission based role, right? Where it's very clear what actions lead to their income. Well, we can help them scale those actions in a sustainable way without having to worry about the stress, the anxiety, the overwhelm, the burnout, working crazy hours, Right, we can help them do less and get more through the structures and the, the systems that we've been able to create. So anyone commission-based, outbound primarily, but yeah, we have worked with pretty much any type of sales guy or small business owner for that matter. So what's the difference between the commission-based guys and the guys, like the, do you see the same effect of people that are, you've got obviously pure commission, base plus commission, or people that just have a salary, like what's the difference that you notice from the salespeople's perspective across those, you know, three different types? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think the fact that someone's commission based or at least base plus commission, right? Like there's a lot more hunger involved, right? Like if you're only eating what you kill, you're going to want to go out and get more. So the idea of, especially when we work with guys in like the solar and the roofing industries where commissions are very, very high right? We help someone close an extra deal or two per month in solar. And depending on the company and where they're selling solar around the country, I'm in the US, like depending on their location, you're talking like an extra six plus thousand dollars a month in commissions, right? Just on those two deals. So when someone is commission based, it, it allows us to tap into that sort of hunger and, and that drive for more because it's way, way more tangible, right? It's, it's way easier to see, okay, if I do this, I'm going to get that. And that thing that we're going to get is going to be a higher number in the bank account, which yields, obviously, like it's, it's always about something more than money, right? If you're wise to only financial, that's way like we're, we're in the, the shallow end right there. There's always something like, what will the money allow? And we can tap into that way easier. And so obviously for commission-based salespeople, they, they understand when they start a job like that, that, you know, my output is, you know, directly correlates to the input that I receive. So mm -hmm. why, why don't they already do that? Like, why aren't they already super hungry? Why aren't they already performing at that level? I think this is, it's not unique to salespeople. This is just people in general, right? Like anyone listening to this, no matter what industry you're in, for the most part, and let's be real, anyone listening to this is a high achiever. They're striving for something better or else they would not be listening to any sort of personal development related podcast, right? Like just be listening to music or like watching television or Netflix or whatever it is. So anyone listening is already probably exceeding the norm in whatever it is that they do. But 
if we get really true and really like real with ourselves, man, there's somewhere that we're not hitting the targets that we know we should. Like there are things that we know we should be doing, but we're not right? Like, why aren't we doing it? And that question has been the crux of everything. Like, that's the driving force for everything we've been trying to build. Like, why is it? We know what we need to do, but we're not doing it, even when we know that it's it's going to lead to what we want. And I, I think the easiest way to explain that is, like, as human beings, we're wired for the path of least resistance, right? We have a 2,000-year-old brain. It hasn't changed a whole lot. And it's one job is to keep us safe, right? And what that means is basically staying in that comfort zone. But Kim, you and I know, and everyone listening to this understands, if you want anything out of the ordinary, you have to do something out of the ordinary. We have to get out of that comfort zone. That's contrary to what our brain wants us to do. So it's a little bit difficult and we need to figure out ways to do it. And that's a lot of the work that we do. You know, the first program that I ever built when I first stepped into the coaching industry was called Fear Hacking Academy. And actually, that, I think it's this brand right here. It's still like the skeleton and a lot of the architecture of what we do in the results engine in many of our programs, but it's all around hacking that decision-making process, right? Being able to lean into that fear and use that not just as a compass, but something that's going to drive us to take the actions because we know we need to do them. So I think... With now that that rant is over, if we were to boil it down to like the actual answer to your question, it's we're wired to stay like our brain is our brain is wired to keep us safe. And that's to keep us comfortable. Oftentimes those things we know we need to be doing. It's not that path of least resistance. So it's not that inherently easy to to walk that path, so to speak. That makes a lot of sense. And with the salespeople that you do see are there anything like are there any sort of and let's just say maybe that sometimes people are aware of it sometimes they're not aware of it are there any things that you see straight away when someone you know gets you on board and gets you look at their team or maybe it's a business owner for themselves where you go hmm, these are some of the things immediately that you notice that they do maybe that they don't conscious they don't have the conscious awareness of and then they don't pick up on in the positive or the negative on the things that are like hindering them and like holding them back yeah Oh, uh, there's a, it, it depends on the person for sure, but there's a couple of commonalities, you know, I think number one is, well, I guess before we even go into any of the different like sectors of this work, the first thing is that there's always another level, right? So we always have to understand where we're at and what that next step looks like, whether that's on the energy pillar, if we're going to talk high performance or you know, even just clarity, productivity, we can talk about all these different sectors, but I think some of the most common things are one, there's usually something that we could do in the, in the energy management space. that's a little bit better, right? Sales is notorious for just relying on stimulants, you know, like coffee's for closers, right? That like cliche line. And by the way, like I love coffee. I'm a big, I love to use caffeine as a tool. I come from, my background was in software engineering and the joke was literally we turned coffee into code. Right. And then I also have the, the fitness side of my life where I was a competitive powerlifter for many years. And it's like, cool, you got to chug pre-workout, right? Always relying on something externally. So I was very much this way as well. So there's usually something that we can do in that sense and not necessarily taking that completely out because don't touch anyone's coffee. Like that's a re really easy way to make a mat. Can't even speak a real easy way to make an enemy, but there's something that we can do, right? To understand that there are, there are ways that we can actually leverage maybe breathing practice, breathing exercises, breathing practices, lots of different things that we can not only ramp our energy up, but also cool it back down depending on what we need throughout the day. So that's something usually on the clarity piece. And when I say clarity, like in the high performance world, clarity is the cornerstone habit. Right. And what we mean by that is I, I compare it to a rising tide. When you have clarity, everything rises. But when you don't, everything kind of falls back. Right. And this kind of talks back to what we're talking about before. Like when someone's commission based, we can kind of help them develop that hunger a little bit easier. It's easier to paint that picture. And sometimes that's by helping them generate a lot more clarity on what they want right? What it's going to take to get there. And above all else, why they want it. Right? Like, it's become really, it's become, I guess, like the cool thing to do to say that we want these like six, seven, eight figure businesses, because like the rest of Instagram told us we want them. But if we got really real with ourselves, Kim, like it, maybe 
300 grand a year would give us everything we could ever dream of and more, right? So having that clarity about under, and understanding that, it changes the game because why are we going to beat ourselves up for striving for figures when we could literally be living our dream life times 10 at 300 grand a year? Doesn't make sense. So there's a little bit on the clarity piece. And then I think the biggest thing for me and the biggest thing that I've seen is in the productivity space, you know, especially when it's a purely commissioned role, people get into it because they want the freedom, but then the freedom becomes, becomes like what cripples them because there's not enough structure. They don't know how to manage the time and manage their days. And that's a lot of the work we do, like help building out like data trackers to figure out one, once we've reverse engineered the targets, we know what we're striving for. How do we transition them to be non-negotiables and then also structure the day properly such that we're hitting them? So those would probably be like one or two pieces in each of those three areas. But those are the three main areas that we're working with people most frequently. I think it makes a, a, a lot of sense. And I mean, what sort of, what's the, because some people as well, I think sometimes when they look at these things, and as you say, maybe number one, a lot of the times, even the business owners that the salespeople work for, maybe they don't even have clarity about what people could achieve. So if someone's got a sales team that is doing okay, like what sort of uptick in performance can you kind of see? If you can help people overcome these things, get help them step into that high performance mindset and consistently do that, what's the difference yeah. between an average team and a high performance team? I mean, it depends on your industry, but probably a ton in revenue is number one. And I think a huge piece of that is, and I'm going to kind of contradict myself here a little bit on the surface, but it'll make sense in a second. You know, when, when people hear high performance, they usually just think making a boatload of money, right? Like mountains of cash, but that's not really high performance. Like high performance leads to that, but that's not the only thing. And I think this is where a lot of people get it wrong, Kim, because Everyone listening to this probably knows an example of this in their life, but we all know that person that maybe is at the peak of their financial success in our eyes, however we define that, but behind closed doors, like maybe their relationships are falling apart or maybe their health is deteriorating, right? That's not high performance. High performance is succeeding beyond standard norms consistently over the long term while maintaining positive well-being and positive relationships. Those last two are key. So it's not just about making a boatload of money. Now, why do I bring that up? Because yeah, they're going to make more money, right? Like let's use door-to-door -door sales, for example. We're working with a solar company and let's say their guys are knocking 30 doors a day, right? And maybe that's enough for them to individually close four deals a month. In solar, that's you know, compared to other industries, that's a decent income, you know, 10, 12, maybe 15 K per month in commissions, depending on the size of these systems, depending on their corporate structure, the company they're with. But pr problem is it's like below industry average, right? So like what happens if we get them knocking 50 doors a month or a, a day, excuse me? Well, if we can do that with the same energy and performance and let's say their closing doesn't even get any better, we can estimate that they're probably going to close, what did we say, 30 before? So we're probably going to close an extra 60% of those deals, right? So, you know, you're going to go from four to six deals a month. You're going to grow by a fair, oh, actually, I did that math wrong, four to seven, maybe? I don't know. I should have used better numbers. It's a little late here on the East Coast, so forgive me. But that's not it. Like, that part of their life will change. But here's what's better from a business owner's perspective, because as their team is performing better, your turnover is going to go down, right? Because your, your employees are going to be doing more work in the time that's allowed, and then they're going to have an amazing home life, right? They're going to be more fulfillment. There's going to be more overall happiness and joy. The company culture is going to improve because everyone's firing on all cylinders, but they're not doing it by burning the candle at both ends, right? So when retention goes up, the cost of bringing on new people becomes not necessarily non-existent, but that investment for onboarding over and over and over again to keep kind of chasing that churn, that goes down, right? So it makes it an absolute no brainer. And like, it's tough to really quantify that, right? Like I look back in all my, like we just, one of our clients last month just got his dream car delivered. Right. He went, he went from one deal the previous month. He did eight deals last month and he got his dream car delivered, which is amazing. 
it was a couple rough months before it because this was an example of it taking a couple months to really get it rolling but dude it it's not just about that like the transformation didn't happen on the doors the transformation happened on how he was structuring his morning or like the transformation happened on like making sure that he was communicating openly with the people in his life and it's when I first started in this industry many years ago, like as I started working with a lot of people, it always confused me how the big transformation, obviously as the business owner, like, and how I defined value back then, I always wanted them to get a massive financial ROI, which they did. But the big transformation was always in what I call the life stuff. So that's how I'll wrap a bow on this. Like, yeah, the companies will make more money, but it's not always just directly through revenue. It's also going to be through retention gets better, employee like happiness gets better, their overall life fulfillment gets better, and the amount that you have to invest in onboarding goes down. So it makes that net even bigger. So, so many different areas, but at the end of the day, everyone's way happier, fulfillment's through the roof. And obviously, we're in this business because we want to make money so we can help a lot more people. And, and that's what we're able to do as well. And what made you want to work with salespeople? Like, obviously, you mentioned like these tools could be applied to really anyone, anyone in a yeah. company, individuals, um, employees can go out there and get it themselves. What was it about salespeople? They like, yeah, cool. That's, that's a, that's a group that I really want to help. Yeah. So it's a really good question. And the, the short answer is I tested a lot of niches on the way here and I, I kind of dumb lucked my way into this, you know, at the, when this all started, I wanted to, I just turned 30 this year. And when I was getting started in the consulting and coaching space, it was about four years ago or so. So I was like 26 years old and I knew that people in my, like in the, like in our age demo, right? In this millennial demographic and now even lower now that I feel like I'm getting old, but not everyone was investing in themselves the way that I was, right? And it took me a while to get there, but I was the type of person that I just believed that money put back into myself and my business and my personal development will yield me a better ROI long-term. And I knew that the way that I thought was different than most. Not that it was completely uncommon, but it wasn't as common. And I really was passionate about serving our demographic. So in my eyes, I needed to serve an audience that I could not make income claims, of course, but at least be able to loosely associate a dollar sign with the promise of what we were doing, right? And that's why we started working with business owners, entrepreneurs, some commissioned sales pros, and uh, it started to niche down throughout the years. And this year we started working with a ton of door-to-door -door guys. That honestly happened through a, a connection and a good friend of mine from a mastermind that I'm a part of. We were at an event out in California. I was giving a talk to our mastermind. He was like, dude, I need your help. So I started working with him. He was like, wow, we just made a lot more money. I need you to work with some of my guys. And it really just spiraled from there. I started to work with other door-to-door -door industries. They were in solar, started to work with some pest control guys, some roofing guys, and still a ton of solar. So it's evolved is the short answer. But for me, it was always like, and this is probably a limiting belief on my end, but how I just like defined value was making more money on an investment, right? So even though the transformation was in the life stuff, which a lot of people would argue is invaluable, it was tough for me to sell that unless I knew confidently like, yo, we're going to make you a lot more money. So I think we just kind of found our way through those niches and here we are. And it's been awesome. So it seems to be very well received. It, it makes a lot of sense. And I think on that side, especially when you're working with something where you can attach tangibility to something that might be intangible. Some people might yeah. be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to hire someone to work on the mindset of my people. Like, well, what is this? I don't sit around and pray on crystals and stuff like that. Surely that's not going to work. But when it's like, hey, we can take your guys from closing, you know, 30% to 60% and they're happier mm -hmm. and they're working less and blah, blah, blah. It's like, wow, that's, you know, you add X, Y, Z to the bottom line. It, it's a much easier decision for a business owner because I think that most business owners are looking at the dollars and cents. There's some that are mm -hmm. like, yes, I want my people to be happier. But when they're like, hey, this is the extra like tangible physical dollars that you have more, it makes it a much easier decision for them to invest in their in their team and it's the same like we have an advertising agency and you know if i just talk about hey i'll get you you know more engagement people are like mm. but if i'm like hey 
I'll help you generate 17 times return on your ad spend for every dollar you put into Facebook. You get 17. They're like, oh, okay, that grabs my attention. You know, like it's just easier yeah. for them to say yes on that side of things. So sure. what's um and, and what are some of like is is there anything that someone could do straight away? Like obviously they can come and work with you and learn from you and, and get you to, to help their team, but is there something that people could do immediately to see like just some aspects of so we mentioned earlier, energy management and things like that. But is there one mm -hmm. thing where you go, there's a little easy little something that people could start doing straight away to, to see a, see an um, increase in performance? Yeah, I think one of the, like I mentioned before, there are three pillars of high performance that I believe you can get like the quickest ROI on your time investment, right? Like things like courage and influence, you can kind of do that, but they're much longer plays in my personal opinion, what I've found working in this industry for a couple of years. And that energy clarity and the productivity pieces are where you can really get a good bang for your buck. So I did a training on, on basically how to get 300% of the results on 30% of the actions. And I'm happy to share that, that link with you. So you can put it somewhere if people want to oh, want to take a look at it. But uh, the crux of it is I, and I dive into all three of the, the pillars there, but I, I went through one exercise in particular, which is called the law of three. And it's something I learned from in Brian Tracy's eat the frog, which is a phenomenal productivity book. Every chapter is a different practice. And a lot of them are very similar. Law of three was just the one that always resonated with me and it worked with my clients really well, but that's a good practice that you can go through. So I'll give you the link for that. But before we even get there, the number one thing everyone should always do is audit their day. Because I think the biggest lie that we ever tell ourselves, and we've all been kind of exposed for this with like the COVID situation, right? In this year, like everyone always wants to say that I don't, they don't have time. It's the biggest lie. And what it really means is it's not worth their time, which is completely cool, by the way, no judgment. But we need to understand where is our time going? Because oftentimes every single one of us has like a good like uh, time suck of choice, right? This black hole that our time disappears to. For me, it's like YouTube, right? And luckily, a lot of what I like is I can rationalize as somewhat educational, but it's still not conducive to what I want to create all the time. Right. So the number one thing that everyone can do is for the next day or two, just audit everything that you're spending your time on. And I want to be clear, like the asterisk here, this is not in a shame on you type of way. It's just very clearly getting clarity, right? It comes back to clarity here, getting clarity around where is our time going? Because we might not need it right now, but eventually we will. Eventually we're going to go on that product launch or we're going to be launching like a live event and we're going to need some extra time or like maybe it's crunch time and we have to get a, a presentation ready, whatever it may be, something's going to happen where we need to get access to that time. And there's only 24 hours, right? So we can't just create more of it. We need to know where to go and get it. So for the next day, two days, if you're feeling ambitious, audit everything that you're spending your time doing right? Not to the minute you can, like I have clients who literally track in like an app to the minute, everything that they're doing. And I'm like, Whoa, like that's next level data. Let's roll. This is going to be fun. But at least down to like the 10 or 15 minute mark, I prefer five to 10, but if you're, if you're feeling like it, yeah, you have to jump to 15. I understand. Do that for the next day or two and just get clarity around it. And again, like underline bold face italics, like everything, this is not to be like shame on you. This is purely just to understand, right? Because we need to know where we're at. We need to understand the baseline before we implement any productivity tricks, strategies, hacks, whatever. Like there's no sense optimizing something that shouldn't be done in the first place. So that's, that's like the prerequisite right there. And then everyone can jump into a practice like the law of three. And that's where you can really start to scale some of their, some of their business career stuff, whatever it may be that will really help them out. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I always tell people when they're, they're like, how can I improve my productivity of time? I'm like, you need to track what you're doing. And then, because most people have no idea. And uh, back in the day, I used to work in an accounting firm and we were accountable for every six minutes. So we had six minute billing increments that we had to track and record. And then they're like, oh my God, like, how, how could you do that? It sounds like that would be really hard enough. I was like, look, well, we had to. It was like the part of our role and, and like lawyers and accountants are notorious for this because they bill on an hourly basis. They have to do it. Yeah. So for me, when I came into doing it, I was like, oh, this is easy. Like 
and I did the same thing like every 15 minutes. I was like, oh, this is a breeze. Whereas like six minutes, you like speak to client like four minutes, 30. Like you had to be like specific because then clients would come back and look and they're like, you only spoke to me for five minutes, but I got billed for 10 minutes. And like, oh, yeah. you have to be like that specific with it. So it's, uh, it's an interesting one, but it, it does open up. And as you say, even if you are spending time on something like a Netflix or a YouTube or something like that, as you say, it's, it's not anything that's shameful. It's like, cool, you're aware of that. If you want to improve your results, then you know where you've got the opportunity to move things in and out. And yeah. if, you're, if your results are good, then well, by all means, like keep watching YouTube if, you, if, if you're happy. Exactly. And it goes back to the clarity piece, right? Like if we know what we want and we're living and acting in alignment with that, who the hell is anyone to tell us to want more? Like they can't dictate what we want. We define what success is for us. Right. And I'm just a firm believer in that happiness factor, man. Like people can tell me that pizza is not healthy all day, but I'm still going to have pizza on occasion. Right. Cause I love pizza and it makes me very happy. Right. Same with like, my girlfriend and I are watching Blacklist on Netflix right now. Like, I'm going to watch an episode with her at night. Really interesting time to start watching the show, by the way, with like elections going on and like 2020 happening craziness. But like, we want to watch an episode at night. Like, I'm not going to beat myself up for that because I worked really hard when I was working, right? And I know what I want to create. I've architected it. So yeah, man, it's like we all have our vices that we enjoy and we do them within reason. And along it's, as long as it's in alignment with what we want to create with our lives and our businesses, do your thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, we just need to know where the time's going so that we have clarity around it and we can understand like when we need to pull the reins in a little bit, cool. Like, you know, maybe, maybe we uh, wake up 15 minutes earlier so we can still allow for that extra episode at night, you know, or, or whatever it may be. Maybe the workout gets down to 45 minutes instead of an hour 15, just for the next couple of days. You know, we just have that clarity. It makes the, a whole world of difference. And there's a great book I read from, um, I think it's near ER, I think it is, which is indistractable. And it, and it goes through that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can only be distracted if it's something that you're choosing not to spend your time on so it's like if you want to spend half an hour scrolling social media if that's your dedicated time to doing that you can't feel bad about it because you're like no like i've made the time to do that or made the time to watch the youtube or the, the video at night and it's like you're not being distracted if you've set it if you've set out for it and go cool here is my time with my partner where it's dinner and a, and a show like then as long as you've got it in there happy days because you said you're, you're architecting it right yep and it's like you set the intention right? If we're being intentional, which we can't do without the clarity, but if we, if we've set that intention and we're living in alignment with it, dude, have your fun. Let's roll. Like sign me up for that. I love that. And now Mike, as we get in towards the end of our time here together on the show today, I always like to ask at the end, is there a question which I didn't ask you, which I should have? Mm. Man, I always struggle with these questions. (laughs) I don't know how to answer it. I mean, I'm a pretty... I'm a pretty open book. So whenever I get on these, like, it's just like whatever people want to ask, let's roll. But I think we dove into some pretty cool stuff. So if there's anything else you want to ask, feel free, let's do it. But uh, I don't know that I can answer that for you, man. No, look, it, it's it's so good. It's so good. You're, you're, what, you're, you're in the record of two of, only two of my guests are like, I'm pretty happy with the questions that we went through. So nothing yeah. else. And I'm like, cool, oh, good. If, if that's the case, and uh, there's some great value in there for everyone, which is awesome. Now, obviously, uh, Mike, I appreciate you saying you'll share that link with us, which we'll link up in the show notes for everyone to check out as well. Now, yeah. is there anywhere, though, that people, if they go, cool, I would like what Mike talked about, I want to find out a little bit more. Is there anywhere where they should go to connect with you or find out more about what you're up to? Yeah, just Instagram. You might need to link that up as well. I got a lot of Polish Z's in my last name, so it's a little <laughs> tough to spell. But yeah, it's just at Mike Sesniak on Instagram. I answer all of my DMs. So if people have questions, they want to ask something about what we talked about, get some clarity or hell, maybe even challenge a little bit about what we talked about. Feel free, slide in the DMs and uh, let's get the questions answered. And yeah, if I could support in any way, I would love to. Amazing. So we'll link that up in the show notes. So guys, wherever you're listening or watching, scroll up or down and you'll be able to check those out in the in the show notes there. And if you know anyone, maybe they're not just a salesperson or in sales, maybe they're a business owner, an entrepreneur who 
think that maybe there's something more for them for them to be able to get a little bit more and perform a little bit better, please share this episode with them and make sure that uh, they can check it out and hear from Mike as well because obviously there was a ton of gold in what we've just gone through today. Um, Mike, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Yeah, Kim, thanks for having me, man. Really enjoyed the conversation. Pleasure, good sir.